you send him a picture, he's going to put it in a format that you like, kind of play with the lines, play with the color. Looks like the right picture. Look how cool that looks. And then from there, he sends it out and gets it put into print. This is our S2000. It's back in the shop. We've finally got an after hours time where we can do the next stage. Brakes and suspension are done, red seat belts are done. It's lowered and I still kind of keep going back and forth. The mature part of me says that is a good height and it rides nice. Obviously, we're gonna be making more power, so one thing that we need to do, and it's a perfect time to do it, is do the clutch. Well, we sell this clutch in our store. We also sell the ACT OEM disc combo that is uh, really popular. We've sold out of it twice, they're kind of hard to get. So this is my personal choice of clutch. I like this because it's lighter, it's lighter pedal pressure. The ACT is a good combination and it's done well for us. We've tuned a few cars with it and driven them. This has almost the same pedal pressure as a factory clutch, but the disc, the unique material that they use is a carbon Kevlar. It's got a nice smooth engagement, but the pedal pressure is light. Either way, whatever clutch you choose, if you buy from us, you're getting the Nietzsche release bearing. This is the biggest issue with clutches. You can put the best clutch in the car, if this fails, the whole clutch fails. This is the Clutch Master's flywheel. This was the balance when it came in. This is when it left. We send it to a race shop that does a high speed balance, a precision balance. I want to send it out and have the cut basically. It's going to have uh, the put on a lathe and it has a circular bit here. Puts a bit of a cross hatch on it, helps the disc break in. I've shown this on a past video, but it's pretty straightforward. I want to kind of give you a quick condensed version in case you don't want to search for that video. So first thing is take the shift knob off and there is a 14 lock nut, gem nut, whatever you want to call it under here. Super easy. Put your wrench in here, hold on to the shifter, turn the wrench against the shifter and it comes off. Put your hand under here, spin this guy off. Interior is going to come off this way so by putting this back you're not going to drag the shifter on this thread. And again, fingers under here, just pry nice and easy. You don't gotta pull it up too far, especially this, if you break it too much, you can break this area here. And again, fingers under here, nice and lightly, just pry it up. There. So I'm gonna show you how to take this plastic trim out. If somebody has been in here before, they've almost certainly broke it. Don't sweat it. We have it in the store, you can buy it. So, flat screwdriver, these little arrows right here. It's basically at uh, 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 4 o'clock, and 8 o'clock. You're going to put your screwdriver on the inside, line up with that arrow, I'm doing it through the camera, and then you're going to angle it outwards just that much. So you got the three 10 millimeter bolts that you're going to take out, and then the shifter will come right out here for you. Again, that's the three tens, the bolt in here. So I'm going to replace these pieces on the shifter. Not that it has a lot of miles on it, but when you put all new parts in there, it definitely feels better. So what I would do is put in the vise with a rag. Don't over tighten it just, just so you can secure it. Make note of which way this cage goes. There is this little groove right here. Just remember which way it goes. I typically do this and face that away from me. This ball here, the pivot ball can go in any which way. This has to go in a certain way. If not, your shifter is going to be in the wrong direction. I want to pull this off real quick. A lot of people ask me, how do I get this off? Here's a rag right here. I would use my bare hands if it wasn't as greasy. Bend that little tap over, little ball. Just pry it with your thumbs, comes off. Then this guy right here. The hardest thing is it's greasy and slimy, but put your fingers under here and then just rock it back and forth and just pry it up right there. So you're just going to kind of put pressure on it and rock it. And again, make sure your orientation is right. All right, so you see the cut now? You can actually feel it with your nail. This is really nice to break in the disc. It doesn't require as much time breaking it in. You want the disc to mate with that as well as the pressure plate. And they put a similar cut on their pressure plate. So this definitely makes it break in faster. All right, look at the immaculate transmission. It's so nice working on a low mileage car. Everything looks good. 
clutch is right there, the grease is still fresh, like the grease isn't dried up. I don't know if you saw that last video where we pulled it apart. Somebody just put a clutch in it, they didn't put a lick of grease anywhere. The clutch was dry as a bone. And the only thing that they did put grease on was the spline. And they used anti-seize, they didn't use grease. All right, so the clutch off our car looks pretty much perfect. Again, 18,000 miles, it should do. Now the AP2 has the heavier flywheels. Uh, this is the Clutch Masters Billet flywheel. This is one of our favorites. Uh, if I remember, it's about two pounds lighter than the AP1 factory flywheel, which we keep in stock and we have it in the store. So AP2 flywheel, it is the heavier of the flywheels. And I believe they did this to kind of dull the S2000 down a little bit, make it a little bit easier to drive, a little bit less sensitive to on and off throttle. You know, coming into a slowdown, it doesn't rev down as fast because the AP2 has always had that problem maintaining idle, especially with the air conditioning on. So by putting a heavier flywheel in, kind of dulls the whole thing down. The lighter flywheel not only gives you a little bit faster shifts when you get in on the car, heavy, it shifts uh, quicker, definitely more responsive to inputs. You burp the throttle and it, uh, it, it bursts to life much, much faster and a lot more fun than this one. So let's get a weight on this. Look at the amount of drill holes on this. All right, factory AP2, 2013. See that? All right, so factory AP1 flywheel. I'm gonna leave this in the plastic because it is the last one that we have in stock. So there you go, 14, 23. It might be a little bit lighter because it has cardboard and the plastic, but thereabouts. And again, I don't want to get finger marks on it. I want to seal it in the plastic for sale. All right, so the Clutch Masters comes in at 11.25. So about three pounds less than the AP1. We have plenty of these in stock. They're not in the store yet, but leave a comment below. Let me know if you're interested in these. We take these from Clutch Masters. Like I say, we send them out and get them ultra balanced and then have the cut finished on there. We typically sell them installed, but maybe I'll post them in the store. Let me know if you're interested in those, because the AP ones are getting kind of hard to get right now. So if everything goes right, you get this stuff lined up just right, and it should just plop right back at the motor to where it needs to go. Got too much angle now. Open a little bit. It needs to go down. That's more unlike. Is it? Yep. Get this just lined up right, both heights the same. So the trick to this, don't put a lot of pressure on here. You don't want to shove that forward. Just light pressure and you can feel the spline go into the clutch and also into the pilot bearing. If you push it too hard, you can damage the pilot bearing. You can actually push the pilot bearing or sometimes cock it and it damages it. You're gonna get noise from the transmission and the clutch. All right, so this is our wonderful grease right here. New pieces are back together. Give it a, a good grease and then same in the transmission, clean it up, put a bunch of grease in there. So when putting it back in, the little notch right there faces away from you, make sure you kept all that in the right orientation. All right, once you got the bolts in, push the rubber down, then you gotta put your rubber boot back over there. This one's still in good shape, so I'm gonna reuse it. And this same thing, clips right back down. You're gonna push this down over here, and then you're gonna align those little arrows. Make sure that is fitting in there. That back, feel that little groove. There it is, and just snap it down with your fingers. Make sure all four of them are clipped down. Perfect. See the foam is starting to break up, even on this one. It's a low mileage car, but this is back ordered, so we can't replace it. 
just gonna be extra extra careful with it. So now it's back together, it's nice and smooth. I've shown this demonstration before. See how easy that is to press? Watch those two fingers. See? It's one of the reasons I like this clutch. Alright, so we should be good to go. It's always a good sign. So clutch is very light, feels like a completely normal clutch. So one thing we like to do before we even drive it is kind of do an initial break in on the lift, which isn't really needed, but it's just kind of nice. So we'll make sure it goes in gear. Uh, let's turn off the VSA on the 06 and ups. Turn that off. So we're just gonna just kind of do like an initial drive. Just to allow us the clutch to get like a really basic break in. Again, it's not needed. I'm just extra OCD with the cars that we do. We do it with all the cars. So before you put the weight of the car, we just got the weight of the wheels. Just run it up and down the gearbox. Kind of a basic clutch break in. I like to make sure the clutch is nicely seated without putting any heat or friction on there. So now we've got all the lights on. These lights are gonna come on because the back wheels are turning, the front is not, the ABS and VSA. This turns off the VSA obviously through this button right here, but now it sense that is a problem, it's throwing that light. Once you drive down the road, it takes less than half a mile, it will clear. Uh, TPMS light, I gotta look into programming that when we put the new tires on there, I put brand new TPMS centers in, just because I knew they were old. We don't want them failing. They only last about 10 years, then the battery is usually gonna fail on you. But, but now, it's much peppier, much more responsive. So, took about nine pounds off the motor right there. Now, we don't see a lot of issues with lightweight flywheels unless you have a supercharger on the car. Then on the 06s, it's not a problem, but the 2000 to 2005s, sometimes you've got to manipulate the throttle body a little bit, make sure the idle valve is working in good shape, make sure the battery is good. If not, it'll kind of rev up and rev down and kind of stumble a little bit. Uh, the heavier flywheel wheel obviously counteracts that. Uh, the 06s, they don't have that issue. Uh, they're electric throttle body. The throttle body is much quicker to react than the idle valve but that's much peppier, much nicer. These are frames that I got off Amazon that I really like, but I don't like the way they sit off the wall. We kind of made a little loop and we have a screw back there. We have different frames. So when you look at it straight on, it's not that bad, but you know, there's a gap here. It's kind of annoying. Well, this is the truck. This is the Carbon Z06, which uh, was just sold recently. Uh, the S2000 that is currently in build. Uh, that is our all-wheel drive case site. We're going to take that one down and replace that picture. This was done by Monaco Auto Design, by the way. Check this out. I did a video on this and I really like it. There's a, a fourth picture about to go up. You're going to send him a good picture of your car. Kind of give him an idea of what you want it to do and the background and such. As you see, we have the theme all kind of the same with a black background. Well, he puts it into... Obviously a much cleaner form, blows it up, puts the light in right, takes the glare away, clears it up, you know, cleans up some of the lines that might be messed up. And then he can send you it back or put it on a print like this. George brought in these super unique 3M little hangers. The kind of strips that you stick on the back of your picture, stick to the wall. A little ingenious. That's unless they don't fall off the wall. If they don't fall off the wall, they're really cool. But the idea is we get rid of that gap. It's got a much more modern, super flush look. And of course, if they're crooked, which these are, as you see, it's, it's like you can do this forever. And then as soon as somebody slams the door, he goes whoop. You can uh, get them all aligned perfectly. So we took the wire off. Uh, we should probably take these off. These are gonna be higher than this, aren't they? 
It's going to be close, but might as well, we're not using them. Yeah, they're close, they're not going to, but if not, if they touch, it won't let this stick to the wall properly. This is basically the, the fourth picture in the group. This is, again, done by the same person, Monaco Auto Design. You send him a picture, he's going to put it in a format that you like, kind of play with the lines, play with the color. Looks like the right picture. Look how cool that looks. And then from there, he sends it out and gets it put into print. Look how cool that looks. So again, we did it to match all the rest. It's got the black background and the shade in to match the car. Looks super cool. Let's get it in a frame, then you get a better idea. prove it's right. We're gonna leave those out. I should show my wife this. Every picture should come with a level built onto it. Because my wife never believes me. Every time we put pictures up, that's crooked. I get the level out, the level's perfect. I sit the iPhone on it, the iPhone says it's perfect. Bring out an architecture engineer, he says it's perfect. Wife goes, that's a little crooked. Is it still fit? Yeah, just checking the measurement there. Three and a like 32. I'm going by millimeters. Yeah, why not, right? That's not millimeters, is it? <coughs> 32 millimeters? That's way more than millimeters. <laughs> That's there to there, whatever that measurement is. 32 minus. Yeah. You put a minus sign in it. And just put it over there. Hold it at 32 ish. Alright. I'm alright with that. Do you want to hold it? Yeah. There we go. That's looking a little bit better. I've got my light over here. They blind your light. So check them out. Monaco Auto Design. Get your picture of your car put in a poster. Hang it on the wall. Hang it in your office. Hang it in your wife's office. So she can realize where you spend all your time and money. Look how cool the Integra looks. So cool. I'll put the link to these frames. I think they were about 30 bucks a frame. Which frames, I mean, 10 feet away they all look the same. But you can get hardwood frames that cost a hundred bucks or these Chinese frames and they look just as good in my opinion very cool so the steering wheel is in excellent condition there is a scrape right here nothing too bad but I did send the uh, the core wheel off so we could get red stitching if you remember we did the red seat belts and it's gonna kind of tie that together uh, the new one obviously is much much nicer leather we just take the key out. So this is the wheel that we sent off to have redone. It's kind of hard to tell. It's also hard to smell through the camera, but this has that really nice exotic leather smell to it. And of course the bright red stitching. See that? It's gonna pick up the red stitching and the red seat belt pulls in the color of the car. I really like the way this looks and it's a fairly easy modification. You can buy a wheel and send it off and have done or take your wheel off. But you see this has that kind of that polished leather look this is that really really nice leather it's got the nice dull look it actually feels a little bit grippier too because it doesn't have the polishing on it so we did a video i'll link it in the description how to change your wheel i kind of did a step by step how to do it. it's pretty straightforward it's always nice to get an idea before you do yours if you watch a video so this is the next thing going on the lht s2000 All right, steering wheel is on. And again, look how nice the red stitching is. I really like that. So I'm debating about doing this, about getting one made. I don't know, not really into the whole make everything match because obviously you'd have to do the whole entire car, but that might be something, but so nice leather and the red marker. And again, something that I like, I have it on the Porsche. And I just think it's kind of cool. It's always something I'd look at racy wheels. It was something that always appealed to me. Plus it kind of helps you, you know, you drive down the road, let you know you're going straight. <laughs> so I want to drive this one for the next few days. I'm going to break in the clutch, get some miles on it, make sure everything is happy. But that wheel, 
wheel feels so nice. Always recommend break them in. We break them in on the dyno just to do pulls on the dyno, but remember, there isn't as much load on the dyno as there is on the road. More things to come on this. Clutch is done. Big thanks to Clutch Masters. Still our favorite clutch, but remember, we carry three different clutches in the store, OEM, the ACT and OEM, and of course, uh, the Clutch Masters. So thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Don't forget, hit the subscribe, hit the like, and follow this build on our playlist.